Hello, I'm Galdok, and in today's video, I'm going to be working on Blender stocks for my mod. Um, what do I mean? Uh, well, I'm basically making some graphics and stuff for my own mod. Uh, it's going to involve making a whole bunch of these things here. In fact, I've already made the machined intermediates on this side. Today, we're going to be working on these the uh, actual stocks here. Uh, the actual lion's share of what I'm going to be doing, though, will be over here with the mini assemblers, which I'll explain once we have a bit more familiarity with what I'm doing here, so it'll make sense. Uh, but what we're doing is we're here in Blender, and as you can see, I've got a file already open, um, and it's already set up for a lot of how I do art in Blender uh, for these sorts of things. And what we're specifically working on now are, because these are intermediates, um, the iconography for it. And so that's essentially what this is gonna end up being. So like if I come in here and I hit F12, you'll see I get an icon. Um, now what I would like to do is to essentially make this look fairly interesting um, and distinguish it from other sorts of uh, things. So like if you look at these, let me check the levels, we're doing good. Um, if you look at these, a lot of these look kind of the same. There's wire stock, gear stock, girder stock, that's all fine. But like the sheet stock and the square stock, well, they're kind of squarish. So I'm going to have to do some things to differentiate those. Further, another part of my mod is going to involve different materials. So more than just copper and iron. Um, so we are going to have to do other tricks in order to distinguish the different stocks and intermediates. Not only so that people can actually look at it and see it from a glance, but also for those of us that have visual impairments uh, pertaining to color specifically, I want to be able to give them some distinguishing features to see here. And my trick is I'm going to be using lighting for that. Ah, hello, Crescent. Good to see you. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started with that. Um, so we're going to, so we've got the plate there. Um, let's go ahead and mix a thing of square stock. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide this. Um, we're going to leave that there. The way I tend to organize this is I will turn, where is it, machined intermediates? I'll take like the wiring here and I'll just leave, if I turn all these back on and the, there we go, the, the thing which it comes from, ah, you can see I've got something else already turned on down there. Um, basically this allows me to in place edit pretty much everything. Mini assemblers, yes, I will be explaining that soon. <laughs> that's, that's one of my big ideas for the mod that I wish to work on. Um, but yeah, so basically... In here I have a bunch of different things which I'll explain as I make the new ones, but that's generally how I organize the file, so maybe that might help you. Um, so let's go ahead and make a new uh, collection, I almost said directory, uh, called Square Stock. So inside of here I'm gonna go ahead and create a default, not a default cube, just a regular cube. A um, Couple of things, let's go into here so that I can just edit quickly without having to wor worry about the rendering. Hit uh, Shift S, we're gonna say cursor to world origin, Shift S, selection of cursor. That'll just sort of reset it. There's other ways of doing it, but that's just a keystroke you get used to, uh, or two. So let's go ahead and make a square stock. Um, I'm going to uh, scale it, Shift X to scale around the, to keep it parallel to the X axis. Um, that looks square-ish. We're gonna rotate it on the Z axis, and then I'm going to scale it up. I'm also going to, this is sort of looking down on it. A lot of these, um, I have the camera, it's actually I've hidden it, that's right. Um, it's point, it's angled down at a 45 degree angle for purposes of making stuff in Factorio. Um, but I actually find that that helps me, helps keep me on track for making these, these uh, particular kinds of intermediates and getting consistent looking icons. So I'll rotate it on the Y axis of its own local axis. I'll raise it up. I'll bring it closer. I'll scale it down just a bit. Um, there we go. And so this is probably good enough for a square stock. Uh, let's go ahead and hit Control A. We'll apply the scale. So now it's one to one to one. If you come in here, take a look. The scale is now one. Um, what I will do is I'm going to give this a bit of. Hmm, I can probably put some edge wear on here actually. Uh, there's a couple of different ways of going about this. Um, you know, I actually have an add-on called one-click damage. I might take try to take a look at that at a different time. I don't want to do it live on stream. And, um, but there are different ways of going about this. Uh, so let's go in here, edit, 
create a loop cut, bring it up here, go to there, grab that vertex, and is it gonna let me do this? There we go. So I'll come in here and I'll just take that vertex, create it something like that. It's a little hard to see what it's done, but if I come in here and I join these together, now you can see I've got sort of a ding in there. And I can come in there and I can actually, if I send the 3D cursor to this again, what have I just done? Oh, that was selection to cursor. <laughs> cursor just selected, whoops. Now what I can do is I can take these three things and I can select the 3D cursor and I can scale in on it and then I can basically scale just that ding without messing around with these uh, guys here. So little tricks like that. Um, I'm just gonna do that a couple of times. But the problem now is that this is no longer a uh, four-sided thing. This is now a five-sided thing, so it has this extra side here, so I can't quite use the loop cut. But what I can do is let me go ahead and I can forget about the rotation. Let's, um, I could probably move the camera to it, but it's probably easier if I go into Object, Alt-R to kill the rotation. And now I can look at it from the side. I can go back into Edit, Z to look through it. I can grab the Knife tool and I can just go like this, hit that, hit Z to make sure I'm snapping along there, click, hit enter, and now I should have, oh, it didn't go through. Oh, I probably need to, outside, occlude geometry. Let's try not doing that. So if I go here, do the same process and hit enter, does that give me what I want? Yeah, there we go. So now I have more verts to work with. I'll come back up here. Um, I will again. So in order to bevel this, I'm saying shift control B, and that's what gives me this goodness here. I'll grab these two, send the cursor to selected. Again, we're scaling about that. Grab those, scale that in. And actually I can come in here and GG, move that along there. And then I get that. Now it's not quite as obvious what's happened, um, but you can still see Oh yeah, I'm still editing along there. Um, let's go back to median points. Here we go. And probably there. Yeah, you can still kind of see it there. I don't know, it'll give me some sort of um, visual clarity there. The problem of course is that this is gonna be reduced down very small, so it's not gonna be that big of a deal. I like the fact that this is not these two angles are not sort of lined up with the sides here. This one kind of is actually, but it gives it more of a 3D sort of feel to it. Um, the other thing that I can do is I can come in here, edit, select faces, press I to inset this a bit. Um, let me undo that. So the problem is that the center of that face here is where the, is what sort of tells you how this is gonna operate. So if I move the cursor too close to it, I get no control, if I move it far away, then I get a lot more control. Um, what am I making? Yeah, what am I making right now? Sorry. Uh, so I'm working on, so these are the stuff that I need to make. Um, I've already made the machined intermediates. I've made the shielding, paneling, framing, gearing, all that stuff. Um, right now I am working on these stocks. Um, and the idea is that they are going to be part of a workflow where you machine metal and you essentially get different pieces to build the different assemblers and stuff. It's a complexity adding mod, um, that I hope will be interesting. Um, there we go. Uh, let's do it. There we go. So something like that. That gives me a little bit more to work with here. That looks kind of square-ish. Um, I can come in here, select that, hit Control B, and I can add in a gentle bevel. I could probably bevel everything, though. Let me just do that. I'm going to bevel. It's going to be interesting now that I've put in those dings that I'm doing a bevel operation, but we'll see what happens. I'm not too worried about it. I'm using uh, this mode in order to, why am I not selecting that? Um, so in order to see the different uh, sides that I've got, that'll be perfect. So I'm gonna come in here and bevel it. I didn't need to bevel all those things. I'm gonna keep this relatively small. I just wanna catch the light with that. Um, one side will be sufficient, although I might, you know what, let's do that again. I'll put in three sides that way. Uh, when I go to sharpen this, so like if I go out, oops, I'm pushing all sorts of buttons. <laughs> Let's try this again. Uh, good, okay. Um, and then I'll come in here, tab object, and then I can go to shade, actually Q sharpen, that's a hard ops thing. 
and I can change the angle to not catch those down there. If I go below 45, these should come back, although I'm not sure if I made that 45. Might be a bit shallower. 30 is usually where I go here. Um, well, if I want it back, here we go. So I can go grab that, XX, and I can bring it back here. There we go. Um, now I can come back out here, Q, if I control click, I'm oh, sorry, control shift click, I can recalculate the sharps. And what that does is it tells me um, these blue cyan lines here um, are where it considers it to be sharp. And so it'll give me a nice hard angle, but it's not going to give me on these, although it did here too, that's not good. Tell you what, um, let's go back out to object. We're gonna, um, again, Q, control, shift, click, sharpen, but now we're gonna change this and raise this back. Let's call that 45 degrees, that should get rid of those. And then click here, let's check it out. Yeah, see, now it got rid of those sharps. We don't want that. I do want it on this though. This is good, that'll catch light. Um, I don't care that the normals are a bit borked here. Normally I would, but I'm not too worried about it because of the fidelity we're gonna be dealing with here. It's gonna be much smaller than that. I am gonna come in here now that those are sharp and I'm gonna bring this back out. I don't want it quite like that. Um, I probably could have just manually done it, but who cares? Um, and that looks good actually. Uh, what I might do is I might actually take off a corner here. So what can I do? Well, uh, I'm, oh, my camera's all messed up. Hang on. I'm gonna select that, hit the period to sort of zoom in there. Now I'm kind of rotating around it. Uh, what I will do is I will hit here. I will select that, control plus. I'm gonna actually hit F to fill that in. And then what I will do is I will scale this up a little, it's not gonna work. Hmm. <laughs> you know what, let's undo that. I tell you what, we can just do this with a, a Boolean subtract. So what I'll do is I'll create another cube. I'm gonna bring it in here. And we're just gonna bring it out until I just catch the edge of that. Uh, let's rotate this uh, in the Y. There we go. There we are. Okay, so if I Save this file. Now there is, a, normally the way you do this is I can click here and then shift click here and hit control minus, but I've been getting a bug with that for some reason. It hasn't been working. Not sure what's up with that, but I can just come in here manually and hit Boolean and then grab that. We're gonna go with fast just to keep things nice and easy. Um, and with that, we're going to apply it. And then we're gonna delete this because we don't care. And now we have a nice owner, corner ding here but that might be a bit too much. Let's go ahead and try that again. We're not gonna apply that just yet. We're gonna go here. Uh, we're gonna go down along its own X axis. So that'll pull it out there. In fact, what I can do is I can actually set this oops, to wireframe down here under, the, under its viewport display and object properties. Uh, and if I do that, then I can see what I'm dealing with here. Um, you know what? That's not quite as dramatic as I had hoped. What if I come over here and then do something like that. That's probably better. Uh, let's move this out along. Is it its Y axis now? No, it's Z axis. Yeah, let's just take off a little thing there. That looks good. All right, so um, actually let me take off a little bit less. All right, now, um, I guess we don't necessarily have to apply it, but let's actually start naming these things. So this is the square stock. I'm gonna copy that because I'm gonna type that a million times. Square stock cutter. There we go. And now we need to give this an actual um, material. Now the thing is that I'm gonna be using at this stage uh, things like iron and copper and all that. Right now, what I'm more concerned with is less about the actual material. Um, I have a whole bunch that I've prepared here. Um, and it's more about just having something to work with so that I can get a general feel for what it looks like. Because I'm going to be using the lighting to determine how this thing is uh, distinguished. So let's go ahead and call it, uh, let's just call it brass. Um, so this is the brass that I've made. It's not super great. I can come in here and get, what was this going to be doing? Oh yeah, the sanding. I was going to do something with the normal there. I haven't actually finished up on that. Um, I haven't, I've had a revelation on how to do that, and at some point I'll come in and I'll fix that, but that ain't right now. So let's just bring these things in closer. Um, we don't necessarily need to go too deep into this. Um, suffice it to say that I have two different things here. 
uh, two different colors um, and two different like shininesses. Uh, so let's come up in here. Now we don't have any light and this thing is also set to view. So we're gonna get rid of that. Um, and that way we can't see it in any of our modes. We don't want it. If I hit render, I should get a very dim thing without it there. Yeah, we're good. So now we need some light. Let's go again and save it. So there's two different kinds of light that I like to use. One is an emissive light that usually gets in the way. So we're gonna come in here, say um, lighting emitter. So we're gonna copy that. And then within that, I'm gonna go ahead and select that to make sure I create the next thing in there. Uh, let's send this back to the origin and oops, let's create a plane, scale it up, bring it up, bring it around here, bring it even higher. And then we're gonna go ahead and tilt it towards the thing. I'm gonna give it a new material, which I will call lighting emitter. I'm probably gonna need to make two of these because I tend to have like key light needs here, but this is just to give me the general lighting and I'll use a different technique and I'll show you in a second for the specific lighting. So let's go ahead and set the emission color to white. That should give me a nice bright light there. And you can see I've kind of got like that gradient here, that really nice gradient that I'm looking for. This is almost a cartoony style. I did not anticipate that. Um, hmm, that's very different from my other ones. Let's see what it looks like when I render. Um, that's not too bad. That is kind of cartoony though. I don't know if I like that. Um, I think it's because this is stretched out here. So I tell you what, let's go ahead and save this. We're gonna take this and I'm going to copy this rotation. Actually, I don't know, can I just copy this? I'm gonna go ahead and take a screenshot of this location and send it to someone who is currently being a notepad. Thank you, friend. Um, here you go, notepad. So I'm just gonna type this back in later because I kind of like the angle that we've got here. Um, and while I can redo it, I'm just gonna be a little bit lazy here. Control R, we're gonna go ahead and edit three, select all, UV unwrap, cube project. Um, here we go. And that should even this out. Uh, correct aspect, yes, fine. All right, and that should, well, would you look at that? It didn't really work. Tell you what, uh, what I can do is I can use, I've got the texture coordinates already over here, so I can actually bring those in. Um, I can plug that into the noise texture here. Actually, you know what, let me do this. I'm gonna kill that, grab this, control T. What have I done? I hit another button. Oh, I accidentally clicked on Adobe Audition. I was like, why is this thing going slow all of a sudden? Uh, we'll bring open a mapping node. Control T will take whatever import you've got here and give you the texture and mapping nodes, which is what we want. And we're gonna go ahead and just scale this in the X direction. Uh, no, that's not the right one. We're gonna go Y direction. Oh, that's rotation. Hi. Uh, how's my face? Full of smart? Yes. There we go. That's better. And so now, if I go ahead and head back to the object, I'm going to go ahead and just type this back in. Negative 14.8, and this is 29.8. I can't type the 0.8. I don't think that's going to be super important, but you know, whatever. Oh, that little tiny bit makes such a big difference. All right. So now, uh, that's still a bit cartoony, um, but that's what this noise texture does. It's giving me sort of some reflections and some not. Um, so let me give a little bit of a rim lighting here. And so the way I'll accomplish that is I'm going to create a very bright point light. Um, let's go, here we go, point. Move this back over here. I'm gonna go ahead and position it manually, kind of there, kind of there, 3D space. There we go. So then I'm gonna bring this up to about 40. Now, that somehow looks even more cartoony. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, actually, but it's not bad, you know? It's not bad. I'm not, I'm not gonna complain. Uh, why is someone messaging me? Who is messaging me? What server is this? 3D Realms, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and just, thank you for messaging me. 3D Twitch, that's great, good job. I should probably turn off notifications for that server. It's a good server, but I don't wanna go there. Um, but that's looking pretty good. Um, I will add in a, a catch light. Actually, I think I have a baffle for this. Um, but let's go ahead and give this that name. Oh, sorry, I gotta copy that. Give that the name, and then we're gonna say, um, this is not an emitter, point light. I like to put the full name of the square stock or whatever in there so that I don't end up uh, having Blender rename from under my feet. 
you know, like 0 0.001 if I just use a generic name like point or whatever. All right, so I think if I come in here, I think part of what's causing it to look kind of cartoony is this. So if I go like that, does that look any better? Maybe, I don't know. If I go there and let me go ahead and grab that. Uh, let's head back to this mode here. We're gonna click on that as a plane in face mode, hit the period key so I can zoom in on it. Hit plus two to go back to edge mode and we're gonna remove the sharp. If I then select the, uh, the boundary loops, then what I can do, uh, so that gives me this outside boundary, but I also want this inside boundary here. Make sure I got exactly that, good. Control B, and this time we're gonna do something like that. Now, how does that look if I go back into rendered mode? Well, I'm definitely catching the light there on that edge there. This doesn't seem to matter. Honestly, I can't tell that much of a difference. Um, Yeah, so this is a stock. This is meant to be simple. Uh, so let me pause here for a second and just show you what I mean when I with my other stocks really quickly. So like if I turn this off, oops, uh, and then I come in here with the machined intermediates and I go to something that looks really interesting like piping. Uh, let me let that be selectable. Then you can kind of see that I've got a couple of point lights here but the reason is, is because if I come in here and I hit F12, then I'm going to get a really nice sort of gradient here. It looks interesting. It looks like there's something there. Um, but this is sort of a more finished product. Ostensibly, this is after machining has occurred. Um, so that is going to be part of my mental puzzle here. That looks like a finished product, and these stocks look like just geometric shapes mostly. So I don't want to get too much detail in here. Um, I say either make the stock look completely full or completely empty. I see. So you're saying that I should take this and maybe just do something like that. Like it was a hollow tube. Although I guess I have a ridge there now. Um, let me go ahead and undo everything. This is going to possibly crash blender. So we're going to go through back to here. It's a lot harder to undo that bevel otherwise. So I think what you're saying is do something like that. Actually, that looks kind of cool in and of itself. It has that sort of red-looking interior. <laughs> um, that's just because it's got the, the light bounces going on in there. Um, and this little corner ding is gone for some reason. Why is a corner ding gone? Uh, now it's back. Oh, maybe I was in edit mode. I don't know. Uh, I can actually make that a bit bigger. Um, let's go ahead and re-enable the view of this thing. Why is that? Oh, yeah, that's right. There we go. So G, Z, Z. Something like that. Make it a little more noticeable. All right. Oh, and the reason that I put this in its own thing. Um, right now it's not in the frame, which is fine, but I like to turn that on. That's hold, That's not hold out. That's um, indirect only. Basically what that does is it allows you to see the light. Like if I were to take this plane and move it back into the scene, you'll notice it's making things light, but it's not like blocking my view. If I turn this back off, then I can't see what I'm working with. It's a bit of a pain in the neck because I still can't select through it, but you know, whatever. Um, let's bring that back. Probably there is fine. I like that closeness. It gives that little hint of that ding. You know what? I think we're going to stick with this for right now. Because this is also somewhat temporary, I can come back and think, have a think about this once I've um, sort of had some time to process all right, so now how am I going to make this differentiated? Um, so like, for example, if I wanted to do brass versus iron versus whatever else. Well, the answer is lighting. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in another uh, collection here. We're going to say um, metal lights. So I'm going to come in here and add another plane. So I found a cool trick. Um, I do photography, or I have done photography and videography and all that. Um, and there's a bunch of things in Blender that you can just do for free. Uh, you want to... 
You want a 1.1 aperture lens? Yeah, that's $10,000 in the real world. That's about free in Blender. So yeah, things like this are kind of interesting. Um, so I can do square stock. This is even physically impossible. Uh, let's let's call this brass light. So I'm gonna have to make different lights based on the different metal names. Um, I will go ahead and I will rotate this on the Y axis. I will raise this up. I will bring this. I'm gonna actually literally cut the piece with this. I'm going to rotate it on the Z axis. There we go. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to also put this, I'm also gonna set this as a holdout. And you can see I get a little um, thing there as this blocks the light from the other emitter. So what I'll do is I'll take this thing, I'm gonna give it a new material. I'm gonna call this, each one of these is probably gonna need its own material. And frankly, they take so little space that it's not that big of a deal. So we'll come in here, I've made a new material. I'll call it this lighting, uh, I'm gonna give it the name brass lighting emitter. There we go. And this time we're gonna raise up the emission. The reason I'm having these all be separate is so they're not coupled together. Like for example, I don't wanna have it um, so that, hang on a second, there we go. Um, I don't wanna have it uh, be too coupled. If I go in there and I change something, I don't want it to screw everything else up. Now you can see it's got a little bit of uh, intersection there. So we'll do this. Like if I move it around, I can get that out of there. There we go. Uh, I think I may want to reverse this. So I'm gonna come in here, edit. Um, I've already got the, I'm gonna go, oops, three, just select the faces, F3, flip. We're gonna flip that normal. Oh, that's weird, why isn't it? Something very strange is happening here. Uh, I just flipped the normal and yet it's not working. Uh, what if I go ZZ here? No. Flip on the x axis, 180. Huh. That's cool. Thank you for coming, Crescent. It was good seeing you again. Well, this isn't quite as cool as I'd originally thought. Um, it's not really working out for this particular one. I wonder why. Hmm. I was hoping. Banana cake, yes. We had we made banana bread last night, actually. I always approve of more of that. Hmm. No matter what I'm doing, it's emitting on this side. And not it is I guess it is emitting on that side too. Huh, that's interesting. Okay, so it's kind of a, uh, it's kind of doing both there. Hmm. All right, well, that might mean that I actually have to use a real baffle. Okay. So that's fine. Um, what if I come in here and I Increase this to like three. It'll make it much brighter, which is kind of what I'm hoping for. But then I can actually come in here also and add in a baffle. So let me add in a circle, uh, raise that up. I'm gonna hit edit mode, hit F to fill it, go back to object, bring it over here, raise it up. Let's go ahead and make this parallel with that ish. It's not going to be perfect and I'm not going to sit here and play with this too much. Um, mostly I just need it to be good enough. Then I'm going to go back to edit mode. Yeah, let's do that. There we go. All right, so now I should have something that will block the light. And if I bring it in even closer, I'll get something like a little shadow there. And what I can do is I can move that like over here. Yeah. 
And then what I can do is control how much it's blocking based on how high up I lift it. So now we have something like, let's go ahead and bake this out. Now we have something with a shadow on it. Now I don't know if I like that though. Um, of course I can go to this material. Um, we haven't even given it one. Um, I can give it, I can say new, I can say square stock um, brass baffle. And what I can do is add in some transmission. So I can say like 0.5. And I can even bring this down a bit. This control is easy. I can bring this up to 0.75. And that should allow a lot of that light through. Um, now if I come in here, rotate that on Z again. I can exaggerate the curve a bit, make it look like it's a little more curviness there. And then finally, in fact, let me just bring this up all the way just to see what happens. So if I'm at one, it's still doing that thing. Huh, is that any different than zero? Yeah, definitely, okay. So transmission, what is transmission roughness? That should be a diffuse thing, I thought. You know, I even can give this like a small amount of light underneath it so that it's not so, <laughs> that's creating some of its own light. Um. Like if I came in here and made that white, I'm gonna get like like five. <laughs> there we go, <laughs> absolutely perfect. <laughs> yeah, that's dumb. Um, set it back to zero. So okay, I'm not sure I'm feeling this. If I'm being honest. But the key is, to a certain extent, just to make it distinguishable. Um, the shape that I am painting on here is something that gives it a bit of visual character. Um, and that's for the, again, people f that have uh, visual impairments. Like, when you design games, you must make sure that people who have different um, disabilities or whatever are able to engage with your content. That is a very important rule. And... That is my clever solution to that. Um, so let me just crank that up all the way. I actually will give it a little bit of a mission. So like 0.3. No, it's too much. 0.1. There we go. See, that That gives me a little bit of contrast to work with. All right. Okay, fine, fair. Um, but that's a good enough sort of representation of it. Uh, we're going to call this square stock brass baffle and we're going to go ahead and put that under metal lights um it's not really a light but it's a baffle and i'll know that anything with brass in it is something i need to enable when i'm doing the brass thing all right so that's a square stock let's go ahead and move on to the next thing wire stock um now wire stock i'm probably going to have on like some kind of a spool um and so we can make one of those pretty straightforwardly let's turn that off make a new collection here we'll call this wire stock and then in here I'm going to add in let's make a cylinder to start with actually no I'll make the curve first and then I'll make the cylinder to go with it so I'm gonna go go down here to curve spiral Archimedean um, I'm gonna leave that view and we're gonna look at this from the side there we go not perfect side but something like this um, what we're going to do is add in, we're going to keep this, the, the number of steps that I think 24 is fine. Uh, we'll add in a bit of height to this. So this will go around like that. I'll add in a number of turns. And now all of a sudden we have this. So this is pretty good. I'm probably going to need more than one of these. Um, but for right now, that should be fine. What does this look like from here? Yeah, I'm going to end up squishing this down. So let's actually bring the number of, actually we'll keep that uh, number of turns is fine. Let's see, height. If I hold shift, I should be able to just bring that in very finely. Very good. Uh, now the radius, let's bring that in. I want this to be a little bit more longer than it is wide. All right, that'll work. Uh, let's go ahead and click off. Um, we're going to go to object mode and bring that, well, we don't really need to bring it down. We're going to edit it real quick. 
All right, so what we want to do is we want to give it a little bit of body. In order to do that, we'll go down here to geometry under depth and we'll bring this out a bit. Oh, I forgot to go to this view so that we can actually see what we're doing in a relatively fast fashion. That's fine. Um, I'm gonna be coming in here and editing this uh, in such a way that it will sort of collapse down some. So I'm gonna grab proportional editing and under here I'm gonna make sure connected only is checked so that way I can grab one of these. And if I move it down, I can control by rolling my mouse wheel up and down how much of this I'm grabbing. So I can actually grab just a single strand if I want, which is a, almost exactly what I want. Uh, see if I can get most of the thing there. Now I can also bring this out um, and w as well as bringing it down, but that's sort of the name of the game here. So I'm just gonna kind of bring all these down I'm missing my mark a bunch of the times here. Like half the time I'm grabbing a vert that's way beyond what I'm hoping for. But that's okay, that's how this goes. This is not meant to be perfect. In fact, the less perfect it is, the better. Um, I wanna have sort of an organic character to it. Um, sort of like there's a bit of back and forth here. There we go, we even have a couple of really dramatic ones like that. There we go. In fact, make sure I get this one specifically. So what I'm doing is I'm grabbing and hitting Shift Z to bring it out along the Z axis. Um, it's not that I'm too worried about it getting out of alignment because obviously I'm not. But what I am trying to do is control like in two steps how far down it goes and then how far out it goes. And in Blender, it is all about that sort of control that you've got. Um, the other thing is that some of these may be a bit too dramatic for me in the way I solve that is I'm going to be bringing almost all of this down. So I'm going to basically be making this about half-ish height. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it and I'm going to duplicate it a few times uh, and then shrink it along its inside axis or sh shrink it along the, the perpendicular to the z-axis and put it on the inside. Uh, so that way you can't even, you won't even be able to see what it is just because the the It'll be too busy, essentially. So I'm just gonna keep mo moving these things towards this sort of center area here. Uh, in fact, I may just do a big old grab here and smish that down. I think it might be time for that. In fact, I'll even bring this out a little bit. Um, bring this out a little bit. So I'm now doing a bit more, there we go, um, a bit more large adjustments. Um, in in fact, we may be, now I don't know if I can do this. Yeah, I can't sculpt it, you can't sculpt curves. That's kind of a disappointment. I would love to be able to use sculpt mode on curves, but it's not such a big deal. Why am I not able to move this? Something's happened. Um, oh, I turned the magnet on, whoops. Little gotchas like that make Blender fun. All right, so now let's come in here and let's untangle a bit of this. It's not going to matter. This is all going to be, I don't wanna say bit crushed, that's not quite the right word, but it's going, I'm gonna lose a lot of this fidelity. So I'm not super worried about it. Mostly I just wanted to have a good character. And right now I can still see some of this pattern in here. There we go. There we go. So that looks pretty good. So what I'll do, let me save this. Let's go ahead and give this a name. Wire stock, call that point one, just so that I already know what's gonna happen. We'll duplicate that once. I'm going to scale it in. Actually, yes, I'm gonna scale it in on the x-axis. And because this is a curve, the mesh isn't changing. It's the, it's the underlying structure that's changing. So I don't have to worry about getting like wires that are way too thin. Like if I come in here, uh, oh wait, that's not quite true. Oh yeah, if I come in here and I hit Control A and apply the scale, then you notice I get back the original thickness of wire. I'm a little further away from it, but yeah. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and bring that back in. Um, I will have to make sure that I do that. RX 180, and then bring this up. I'm gonna scale this back up again. And then I'm gonna take both of these, Control D, scale along the Z axis. Rotate X 180. 
bring it up here a little bit. All right, so now let me come in here and grab that end and hide it in there. Grab that end, hide it in there. Can I see that still? That's actually fine. Um, well, no, it's not. I don't. Want, I just don't want it there. I was gonna say I'm about to hide it inside of a cylinder, but you never know. All right, so let's select this. Control A scale. So that's three. Let's select four. Control A scale, and then two. Control A scale. Now all of these should get a texture. We'll go ahead and call it copper. So what I'll do is I'll go over to here, set this to copper. Boom. And then what I'll do is I've got one selected. I'll select those and then I'll control select one, control L, link materials. And now they all have the same material, save it. And now if I give myself a light, I'll be able to see it, but we're not quite there yet. Uh, what I need now is I need an actual spool. So we're going to create a cylinder. This is what I was sort of hemming and hawing about doing earlier. But now that I kind of know how large this needs to be, I can come in here. I'm actually going to overlap it a little bit on the inside, not too worried about that. Bring it up, kind of get roughly the middle, about there. Uh, scale it in the Z axis. Bring it in just a bit more. Don't want to overlap that much. And now, uh, let's go ahead again, save. We're going to apply the scale, go into edit mode, head back in here so I can see what I'm doing. Isolate it with a keypad slash, control R, roll the mouse wheel up, click. Scale in the Z axis, bring those up. Hit three to go to, that, to the uh, face mode. Alt click, alt select those, and I'm going to go uh, e, scale, shift Z, and we're going to bring these out. So now we get something like this. Now I'm going to add in. Actually, I tell you what, let me go ahead and head back out here. There we go. And what I'll do is I'm going to move these things. I'm going to control select that. Keep transformation, set that as a parent, twirl that down so I can continue to see them. And then what I'll do is I'll come here and I'm going to uh, bring this nearer to the camera and rotate it along its Y axis. Um, hmm. There we go. So again, we're getting sort of that 3D effect here. That's fine. Um, what I can do is I can move this up. It doesn't matter that it's clipping into the thing. You will not be able to see it. I'll move this down. And now we have sort of a messy looking wire stock. I may put a wire coming off the edge, but I'm probably not going to. Let's come back in here. We're going to grab that edge loop, that, that, and that. I'm going to do a bevel. There we go. Then I'll come back in here, grab this. I'm going to E to extrude down. And we're just going to go straight down. I'm just adding in a little ridge here. Again, I will select this, the face mode, hit two, so I can just select that edge loop. Then grab this one too. Do another bevel, but I'm going to roll this down to one face. We don't need much here. We're just trying to add in a little bit of a divot. Then I'll select this. We'll go inset. And I'm just going to extend this straight down so that it disappears off camera. Uh, I can see there's a little bit of clipping outside. Clipping inside is fine. Clipping outside is not. Let's come in here and sharpen that. That'll give me those nice rounded edges that I wanted. Um, there we go. Save. I can come in here and grab this right here. And actually what I can do is I can grab all those edges. Let's hit Z. Isolate. Zoom in on it, and I can get rid of those. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go here, and I'm actually going to give myself a little ding. I'm going to go grab, oops, I need to turn off proportional editing. I'm going to grab this and just sort of bring that in. Come back out here. Again, this is organic, so I'm not super worried about it. What, did I not grab a piece? I don't think I grabbed a piece. Whoops. There it is. There's the missing edge. Let's try that again. All right, bring that down. 
There we go. And then let's do the same thing down here. So we're gonna grab this and we're gonna get rid of that. Hit Z, make sure we get that exact same. Let's isolate again. Make sure we get this exact same little doodle there. There we go. There we go. Bring that in. Bring that up just a bit. It's not gonna be perfect, don't care. Just want it to be noticeable. In the final render. Uh, that kind of clipping I'm not too worried about because again, can't see it. All right, so let's save this. Let's recalculate the sharpen. There we go. And I think we're good. I may rotate this in the Y a little bit more. Bring it down just a touch so I can get more of that top showing in there. Now we just need to give this material. We'll call this wire stock spool plastic. Um, that seems like a great way to differentiate this as well, having two different colors, which gives me two different kinds of contrast. That so this might actually be a thing. Uh, let's call this um, for copper. And then we can come down in here. We're gonna say this is black. We're gonna say it's pretty matte. So we'll bring up the roughness and I'll bring a little bit of metallic so we get some kind of shine in there. Now, when I go to the rendered mode, it's not gonna show up lit but that's okay. We're gonna add in a plane, bring this over here, rotate on the X, scale that puppy up, bring it up just a, ah, bring it up just a bit. And again, we'll give this a new material. Let's go ahead and say wire stock. We're gonna call this plane wire stock lighting emitter. Copy that, bring in another collection here, which we'll call the lighting emitter thingy doodle. Bring that as a, oops, not a holdout, but rather an uh, thingy. I can never remember what this is called, the indirect only, all right? Give this a new material, use that same name, it's just fine. Let's bring the emission up to white, and then voila. Now we're gonna make this larger. Now for some reason, there we go. For some reason, this looks weird. Why is this, which? The UVs here are completely borked. What is happening? Huh. Well, that's trash. Um, I can probably come in here and fix this. I have a feeling that I was doing something uh, silly. All right. Um... You know what I can do? I can come in here, I can uh, make a new collection yet again, wire stock, we'll call this wire stock curves. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna move these four things into wire stock curves. Uh, oh, they're also that thing there. Uh, let's clear their parent. Well, no, I don't wanna clear their parent yet. Tell you what, um, let's duplicate them. No, what's happening here is that this outliner organizes things in a way that doesn't necessarily respect the um, the parenting and the uh, collections, which are two very different organizing hierarchies, but kind of trying to be displayed in the same uh, area. So it's weird, I know, but whatever. Uh, so let's duplicate this in place, right? And then we're going to, I'm probably gonna have to click on this several times, but I'm gonna convert this to a mesh. Oh no, it converted them all, that's great. So let's just turn, you know, we don't need these curves uh, there. Let's go ahead and just delete that. Um, we can just turn these off manually. We don't need to have them around all the time. Uh, now for these, I can, oh, what poop just happened. Um, I can come in here, edit, three, select all, I'm gonna do another UV unwrap. We'll do a uh, cylinder projection this time, maybe. Wow, that didn't do anything. Um, a cylinder projection? Come on, why is this not working? Polar is ZY. This is just so weird. I'm getting these really weird effects from like the tangent. I'm using, eh, it must be this. 
If I come in here and I kill that, then we get the back to this. But this is also kind of garbo. Why does this look so weird? This used to look very nice and bright orange. I mean, whatevs. I thought I had another copper in here too anyway, so copper for an, the intermediates one. Let me just try that. So let me undo what I just did there. I'm pretty sure I used that somewhere else. That's not a big deal. Um... Intermediates copper? Fine. Yeah, I like that better. All right. Um, so I think it was this one that had the material. So I'll link the materials there. All right. All right. Now we're kind of getting somewhere. Um, definitely we need better lighting. Let's go ahead and select that. We'll bring the emission strength up. This needs to be... Um... Even darker. All right. Um, so I'm bringing up the metallic, which is making it darker, but that's not great. <laughs> the reason it's darker is because it's um, reflecting less light towards the camera because it's giving me more accurate reflections. Um, I don't know if I want to mess with that. I think I might just leave it like that for right now. Anyways, let's go ahead and duplicate this, bring it down to the Z-axis. That will give me some, like, rim lighting. If I come in over here and just sort of bring it in closer. Here we go. There we are. Let's go ahead and take a look. I bet I just got, are you still listening to Annie? Yes, I did. Boom. So this isn't terrible, but it's not great. Um, what can I add in here to give it a bit more character? Obviously, this copper is just a color, and I've basically cranked the, the metallic. If I drop this roughness down even more, I doubt that's going to really make any difference in the final render here. Yeah, you can still barely see that. Although this, this sort of dark little stripe in here actually adds a bit to it. So let me undo that, see if I still get a dark stripe, and I should be... We'll say happy enough. Um, it's, yeah, really. Um, tell you what, uh, I want to make my own version of this here. Copper for wire stock. There. Now I can crank the uh, crank, bring down the roughness all I like. Um, let's also take this thing and move it um, back a little bit. That'll bring that lighting around. There we go. Um, I think that's about it. So let's go ahead and give this the name point zero zero two, And that's the wire stock made. All right, let's save this. Um, next, gear stock. So let's turn this off. Add another thing. Gear stock. Here we are. Um, ah, uh, gear stock lighting emitter, and I'll copy that name later. So we're going to come in here, add a mesh. This thing actually allows you to make gears. Um, so the gear stock for this is meant to be kind of rough, actually. Tell you what, um, let's not do a gear. Um, let's do an actual cylinder. Um... I guess I don't need it to be super fine. Sorry, I'm just thinking for a second here. So if I go into a cylinder, I can make it 32, or I can come in here and make that 64. I think that'll probably be good. Um, let's make this flat, like a flat disc. Um, there we go. There we go. And so what I'll do is I will, hmm. Hmm, there we go. 
Uh, I should probably name these early so I don't have to do much more work. Gear stock, we'll call that 0 0.01. So if I just copy and paste that and I paste this in there, I don't have to type in the 002. Blender will do that for me, whether I like it or not. Um, here we go. There we go, there's three. And what I'll do is I'll actually take another one and I'll bring it back there. Control R, rotate Y on the 90, rotate Z, rotate X. No, I'll do Y, Y. And then we'll bring that back so it's not actually intersecting. There we go. So this looks like a pile O stock. Good enough to me. Um, I wonder if I can do this. Uh, if I can link the mesh data. Well, I'll tell you what, let me try this. I'm gonna come in here and grab that and grab that. I'm gonna then bevel it. Oh, right, ha <laughs> ha. Let's do a Apply, actually, can I, do I have to do this for all of them individually? Or can I just select them all and hit scale? Let's see, the scale is set for all of them. Very good. All right, so now let's try that again. One, two, give myself three little things there. Keep that sort of fine, there we go. So now we're gonna see if I can't link the mesh. I don't know if that's gonna be the mesh or the mesh data or what's going on here, but we'll find out. That did not do what I wanted. Um, data layout. Nope. That ain't it. Um, oh, that's weird. I tell you what. Let's come in here and we can look at that cylinder 18. We're going to come in here and call that cylinder 18. No. Can I set cylinder 18? Yes, there we go. So now what I'm doing is I am very lazily coming here and I'm making sure these are all set to the same cylinder <laughs> uh, instead of actually copying that mesh over. So yeah, Blender lets you pull little stunts like that, which I absolutely adore. So if I sharpen this, it sharpens them all now. Um, I shouldn't have any sharped edges there, so I probably just ended up doing a shade smooth. That's fine. All right, so now uh, that shouldn't have been under the lighting emitter, but that's fine. We can just move that out. Under the lighting emitter, we're gonna actually add an emitting light. Who would have known? Uh, move this up, move it over here. Same story as usual. Again, the only reason I'm redoing this, I could probably actually recopy this over from another spot, if I'm being entirely honest. There we go. All right, um, let's go ahead and set this to that. Copy that, paste it there, make a new material. Come down here, bring that up to white, and let's um, let's set this to, uh, I don't know, do I have iron in here? I bet I do. Iron, sure. One, two, three, four, link the materials as well. Now, I thought I set you to be a doodly-doo. Why are you still showing up? No, whatever. Uh, that looks like complete crap, so that's good. Looks like a bunch of wafers. Um, hmm, let me think. <sighs> Water. Um, yeah, this one's going to be pretty important to get this one right uh, in terms of how I do the lighting setup. Let me give myself another rim light. So let me come down here to light point. Uh, move this over to there. Um, so right next to the thing, that's about where I want it. Let's move it back just a little bit. There we go. That'll give me nice lighting there. We can bring up the intensity, 30. Something like that, yeah. And that gives me a little bit of a shine there, a little bit of shine there. Um, yeah, and I can set this to be a little brighter. Let's say 10 will be really bright. Yeah, see, it's too white now. But I want to see sort of what the outer areas here look like. Um, I'm not getting enough sort of fall off there. So let me um, change the angle here. 
And I think I may have it too large. That's weird. Um, I'm not sure why I'm not happy with this. It's not very reflective, that's for darn sure. I think at some point I'm just going to have to have a material reckoning and, and come in here and figure out what I want these things to look like. Uh, for right now, though, um, let me come in here and... That's what it looks like. That's should, the rest of this should be pretty reflective, right? That's not too bad. It looks a little wet though. That's a little better. Um, let's go ahead and save this. I'm gonna pause and look at the actual plate that I made earlier and see what it looks like. And see if I've borked it, because it uses it. Oh, that's stock intermediate iron. Oh, I see, okay. Oh, all right, well, what that means is that I need to, when I'm done here, before I do any, once I get done with this, I'm gonna go through and actually uh, do a quick once over um, the materials to make sure that everything is still where it should be. So that's a little better. See, now I'm getting this nice rim here, uh, which is why I put that bevel in there. So that's good. That's what I want. Um, so let's go in here again, edit, isolate, head to this mode here, hit the top and bottom. We're going to inset. And then we're going to delete the faces. Then we're going to select that edge loop and that. Oops. And that. It's very hard to select those little tiny fidgety things. Um, fidgety or not. Bridge edge loops. Um, probably want to bevel this as well. Something that's roughly the same, but it really doesn't matter. It's just there to catch the light. All right. So now let's head back. Here we go. And what we can do, um, let me hit the Z mode here. I'm gonna grab, oops, that, bring it up three, and then I will sh scale that down. There we go. I think if I add in something here, that'll change my normals a little bit. There we go. So that looks okay. I'm gonna definitely be getting rid of some of this stuff. I think this thing has a displacement in there, which is screwing stuff up. So I'm just gonna get rid of that. Yeah, I really don't like that displacement. That was a bad idea. Oops. Okay though, um, that's a bit, it looks plasticky. Let's bring up the roughness a bit more. A bit more all the way. All right, there we go. That looks pretty good. By the way, iron is not blue like that. Not, um, not. It usually oxidizes pretty quickly. Um, in fact, you know what I might do? Let's go ahead and know I have another iron in here. Hmm. Yeah, it has that sort of rust splotchingness on there. Don't like it. We're not gonna use it. All right, so let's undo all that. Head back. I'm headed back. There we go. <laughs> all right, but I am pretty happy with that. So now, yeah, that looks fine. Perfect. So I'm 
I've sort of shied away from doing any more of the uh, different metal stuffs, um, just because I'm finding that I'm going to have to do a sweep of that anyway, so I'll add those in later. Girder stock, that won't be too hard. Um, let's go ahead and save this. Um, what is girder stock? What should that look like? Well, let's close that up. Girder stock. Copy and paste that. We'll add in a cube. Call that girder stock. Um, head here. Do that. I think we're going to keep this as simple as possible. So I really don't want to get too deep in the weeds here. Here we go. Looks vaguely girder-ish. <laughs> All right, uh, I don't want to bevel things crazily. We're gonna actually just use, oops, it's material. We're gonna add a bevel modifier. You know what, I think I can do it with here, can't I? Yeah. What in the poop-a-doodle has just happened? Okay, that's not too bad, fine. Uh, it's also modifiable, which is what I want. There we go, all right. Ah, keep doing this thing. Um, there we go. Hmm. So part of the question that I've got is, do I include one of these things? Or do I include more than one? I think in general, I'm gonna aim for just doing one. There we go, that feels a mostly balanced. Why am I getting, huh, that's weird. All right, um, so we're gonna go ahead and call this, let's just do iron, I suppose. Let's save it. And now let's start doing the lighting. Girder stock lighting emitter. And then we'll come in here and we'll add in another plane. Give it the new prop or the new material. Set that to white. There we go, bring that up. And let's take a look. I'm trying to get lighting to go dimmer as it goes further down there. Let's add in a point light. Right about there should be good. There we go. Let's bring that up to, let's say, 40. Yep, and then um, we'll duplicate this. There we go. Um, I don't like that I can't really see this little thing here. Hmm. Gives it a sort of a weird character. I wonder if I can... Uh, 
do something like that. That's a little better. I think this one just needs to be smaller, though. I think I'm adding in too much light and losing some of my character. There we go. It's a little better. Uh, let's grab this. There we go. That should give me a bit of contrast in this little join here. That's what I want. Okay. I would like a little contrast here, though. So let me move this under there. Right. Need to set that that way. <laughs> kind of staring at this, obviously. When it gets in the frame, then you're kind of like, huh, there's a big old splotch of lighting emitter there. Perfect. Um, all right, now that backlight is a little too bright. Let's bring this back down to 50. Here we go. Still a bit too light. Let's say 20. It's a little too dim, but I need a range here. Actually, that's just about right. Um, let's bring it over here. Maybe that will be a little better. Let's see. So I've made two of them. I'm gonna have to name them differently, aren't I? Yes. There we go. Um, almost done here. Here we go. All right, now let's bring these back down to 10. Now I have three of them. I should have too much light. I don't want to have too much light there now. There we go. All righty, so. Perfect, I am happy with that. So let's go ahead and name this Girder Stock Light 0.001. I'm gonna grab that copy and we're gonna paste it there, paste it there. There we go. And we should be done with the girder stock. Okay. So let's see, I was gonna stream for about an hour. It's been about an hour and 12 minutes. Um, so we've gotten through this, 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 and this. So that's four uh, items made in one hour. Not too bad, not too bad. Um, but yeah, so I'll make the rest of these um, pretty soon. I'm probably going to either play Factorio tonight or work on another <clears throat> part of Factorio stuff. But uh, I think for right now, we'll go ahead and call it here. So thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you had a good time. I know I did. I will see you in the next one. Treat each other safe. Uh, treat each other well. Be safe. And I don't know. Words are hard. Anyways, bye. <laughs>